Hello, I'm Dave Christensen, coming to you once again from the basement at homeandgarden911.com. I'd like to talk to you today about a checklist, a home maintenance checklist. Uh, it's good to keep those checklists around uh, different seasons. There's certain things that, are, that require attention at, as the seasons change. Some of these things are designed to prevent damage. For, for example, if you had a water leak that went undetected, some things are life safety issues. Some things are efficiency issues, like uh, the furnace in your fil uh, excuse me, the filter in your furnace. Uh, if, if that's allowed to uh, become too clogged up, it's gonna be an efficiency issue. Uh, it's gonna cost you more to heat your house. And uh, other things like uh, leaks, of course, if left undetected, that will cause further damage, more expensive damage to repair uh, if left uh, undetected. Uh, other things are life safety issues, as I mentioned, uh, things like checking the batteries in your uh, smoke detectors and uh, carbon monoxide detectors. You can uh, check the, your GFI receptacles. Those are the little devices that are designed to protect you and your family from electrical shock, and those are placed near your uh, sink in the kitchen, along the countertop, any place within six feet of your sink, or uh, in the bathrooms, of course, They're usually in the garage, or any outlets outside are supposed to be under uh, GFI protection. And they need to be tested, ideally once a month. And if you haven't done it lately, it'd be, good, it'd be a good thing to do, as soon as uh, reasonably achievable, as we say. Uh, and you do that by just pushing the little button. It's marked as a test button, and the other one is called a reset button. So push the test button, and you should hear it trip. You should actually hear it trip. If you don't, and if, it's, if it doesn't trip, you can test it by plugging something into it. And if that thing doesn't trip out, that is a safety hazard, and you should replace it as soon as you can. Uh, other things like mice, rodents in your house, they come in doors in the fall. Uh, seeking shelter and if, if they're left undetected uh, they'll their population will grow by spring you'll have a lot of mice in the house and they're easy to spot you know you can find their droppings here and there so it's a good idea to set some traps for those keep them under control because they'll populate the place pretty quickly uh, your dryer your clothes dryer outlet um, vent that should be cleaned of lint because if that's allowed to build up, worst case scenario, that could become a fire hazard. Uh, that would have to get pretty clogged up before that happens, but it's a good idea to be aware and keep that clean from time to time. Uh, now the furnace filter, well, let's get back to the water. You got leaks under your sink. You got leaks around the foundation sometimes. Your water, hot water heater, if it gets old, occasionally it starts to leak. Water leaks need to be detected early. If they're left undetected, it's like a cancer and it grows. Homeowner's biggest enemy is water infiltration. If you can keep water from coming in your house, your house will last hundreds of years. Uh, go up in the attic, check for signs of leakage uh, around the foundation in the basement, under your water tank, under the uh, kitchen countertops, in the bathroom, underneath the uh, uh, lavatories. Uh, around your toilet. Sometimes uh, in the summertime your toilet uh, and, and some of the plumbing pipes will sweat and uh, if the water is allowed to accumulate over time the floor will rot out from underneath the toilet. I've seen it. I've repaired such things. If you have steam, heat, the old time radiators uh, a lot of times were steam and the steam would escape from the vent and sometimes drip. I've seen holes in hardwood floors that, because it was just uh, neglected. Uh, so that's the kind of thing, just be aware of it. And uh, leaks can be prevented, they can be fixed, and they should be. So anyway, getting back to the furnace filter, I'm gonna give you a close up. There's a, a filter on most all uh, hot, uh, forced hot air furnaces, uh, although not all. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how to, how to change that right now. Okay, I'm standing in front of my furnace, as you can see. It's fairly new, it's about a year old. And uh, when we had this installed, we had them install this uh, 
spot for the uh, furnace filter to go. Uh, this is the return air plenum. It's called the return air plenum. You can see my hand here. Uh, the, the air is drawn from all parts of the house. Uh, the return air, uh, the furnace creates a vacuum and because it's blowing hot air out in, one, in that direction, well, the, uh, the return air comes down through here and it goes through here, which is where the filter is. And then it enters the furnace, the actual furnace, and it gets heated up and it blows right back out the uh, supply duct. That's the heated, that's the uh, furnace supply duct where the hot air goes to the, throughout the house. So right here is the uh, furnace filter spot. This little clip here is, holds it in. And as you, as you can see, it's right there. Different furnaces have different size filters. You just grab it if you can with your fingernail. We'll see if I can do this one-handed and pull it up. Ah, uh, yeah, here it is right here. Here's the hot air furnace, right? Or the, uh, excuse me, the filter. It's starting to get a little bit uh, toward the point where I'm going to want to clean it. You can hold it up to the light. You know, if you can't see through that filter, it's definitely time to change it. And this is kind of uh, borderline. According to my calendar where I marked it, uh, it's due to be changed in a couple of weeks. Now, it's good when you change the filter, mark down in a notebook someplace what size it is. Uh, there are many, many different sizes. And uh, what I always do, let me turn this around. I mark on here the date that it was changed. This was changed, uh, today's the 20th of December. It was changed a month ago. Uh, so it's getting toward the point where it should be changed. There's a, there's a right way and a wrong way on here. There, right there, you'll see. There's a, see that arrow right there? That tells you which way the air flows. So you should know which way the air flows through your furnace. And that's what I just showed you a minute ago. In fact, I got it marked right there, airflow. This is the return air duct. That's the return air duct. It goes that way into the bottom of the furnace, gets heated up, and gets blown back out the top as hot air. So you want to pay attention, pay attention to that arrow right there and uh, put it in there the right way. So that's about it for today. I hope it was brief enough, and I hope this uh, video was useful to someone. That's my goal. If you uh, have an inclination to do so, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit the like button. You know, share this with your friends. Send it on to Facebook or send a tweet or share it by some other uh, form of uh, social media. You'll see buttons on the page that you're viewing this video on uh, that, that you can punch. And I'd encourage you to do that. You'd be doing me a great favor. And uh, I want to thank you for stopping by. And we'll see you the next time. Thanks a lot. And have a great day.